Good day students. In today's class we're going to focus on recreating some of the elements that we provided you with. Now when you've started the architectural model you would have noticed that it does start, it does open and come with quite a few um, pre-built uh, families. Okay so firstly if we go to the section in my previous workshop I'd illustrated how to draft a whole lot of information so that's still in our model but we still have some 3d views floors for example that I'd workshopped and showed you how to create the floors but in essence what you're going to be doing in this first part of this workshop is to focus on how do we go and create these elements that we need so we need a 510 mil transfer slab then we'll need to make a timber floor and maybe make versions of the same timber floor. So in the start with the floor information, okay, so by default, in this model, we're gonna have, let's just remove this drafting information for the time being, keep the levels, I just wanna get rid of all the detail items. So right click, select all instances in view, sorry, click, select all instances in view. You can delete those or you can just simply shift and minus the stuff that you don't want to delete. Okay, so I'm going to delete that information for now. So technically, I've got a floor slab. Get rid of the column information as well. I've got floor slabs, okay, that I need to go and change to meet the requirements that were given to you in CON. Okay, so let's first start with the most basic of floor slabs. So you can select any floor slab or you can go to architecture floors and then architecture floor and you can literally start drawing a floor and then change its type there but because I'm in the section view I can simply select the floor slab I'm going to go to edit type so in your properties palette you'll need to go to edit type now you can simply use the duplicate command to create a duplicate of that system family so these are system families they're different to families that you make outside of Revit so a lot of this information lives and is hosted in your project environment okay so basically i'm not going to worry about the name for now the thickness because that'll come back once i start editing this information it will give me the correct information so i'm going to say timber floor okay categorize it better what you'll notice is if you haven't played with your detail settings yet it just means that if your course if your view is set to course view it will highlight that information or this type of floor with this type of fill so basically because it's a timber floor you can go and find a yellow color that you'd like what once you've selected a color you can use the add command you'll see it'll add it to these colors here so you can build a custom color um, a custom color um, palette you can also use color books and this is all pantones so you can go and find very certain, especially if you know what you're printing, you can go and find very specific colors in here and keep using a Pantone color as well, which is quite advisable because then you know you, you've got a very strict color palette that you're dealing with. But for now, I'm just gonna make sure all my timber kind of matches that same color. Okay, great. So in course view just means that if you cut through the slab in course view, it'll show this color and remember this is just type of fill so here i'll just make sure it's sort of fill. i'm not going to play too much with that now to make this floor meet these requirements you'll need to go to edit now what's interesting is when we start doing more complex type of floors you'll notice that you've got a core boundary now whatever is within these two core layers is in essence the core layer of that wall okay now, in general, you want to dimension only core elements, okay? And because this is gonna be a structural slab, you make sure that the category, the function of this is set to structure. Just understand that also controls high weight, um, line weights and it's a, high, it's a measure of hierarchy. So this element is the most important element because it's a structural element. And they de decrease in, so as you keep going down, you'll notice that they will decrease in importance. Okay, so typically this is gonna be a structural element. Now, all you have to do now is change this dimension to 510 and you're gonna leave the material the same. So in the material settings, here you can 
set everything how it works so you can set the graphics the way it looks graphically okay you can set the appearance so what it'll look like if you had to use realistic rendering for example you'll get that kind of finish then you got physical and thermal typically we won't need this because we're not doing structural analysis but it's good to know that it uses the material settings to apply the correct strength and material characteristics to that layer okay within the floor so this is going to be my 510 wall and i'm simply just going to go and say rename i'm going to call this duplicate my apologies i'm going to call this a five so this will be 510 and this will be a concrete okay 510 concrete good so I know it made it timber previously, so that one I'll just need to reuse at a later stage, but this is gonna be a 510 concrete slab, okay? Change that back to green. My apologies, I got carried away there. Make that a green layer, okay? And again, pick a green that works. Okay, just be careful, sometimes they, don't, they do print quite strange. So just make sure that you print a color that works, press apply, press okay. Now in theory, we're gonna have a 510 slab, we're gonna have a 255 slab, and we're gonna have a 125 surface bed. Okay, so in essence, your basement should follow these types of norms. Okay, great. So that's good. That works well, we know that that was in the model already. Okay, now if I just switch to course view, you'll notice that this will all change, and the color should kind of match. If it doesn't match, it just means these if you go and edit type, that should. It's just because there's a drafting. There is, we've drafted over this. We've used a filled region. Okay. All right, so that's, just bear that in mind. Okay. So typically, let me just go and say edit type again. Solid fill. Okay, good. Function, interior. Make sure that that structure, it's a 125 surface bed. Great. Press apply, press okay. Okay. Now, that we've kind of set up our floor slabs, well our uh, 510 floor slab, I'm gonna select this floor slab and I'm gonna make this my 255 timber. Okay, I'm gonna go and say edit type. So that will start reflecting when I change it to um, course view. Now in essence, what is this slab made out of? The core or the, the core strength of it? So let's consider something. I would incorporate this in the whole core layer, so it's a 150 concrete screed on top of a 230 laminated timber floor. Okay, so let's try that. So it's going to be 230, so we're going to add a layer, so you're going to insert a layer. So this top layer is actually a substrate, it's not a structure, that's just to give you a, f a surface to finish to. So let's just move this up, move that up. So that's gonna be your 150. And I'm gonna change that material to screed. Now, a lot of these materials have been made. So if you just simply search at the top, you'll start getting some sand and, yeah, sand and cement screed. Okay, if you wanna go and see how that will look, just make sure that you go to graphics and just make sure that this reads correctly. And typically that should be a gray layer. Okay, so just make sure that that is great. You don't need to change anything else, you leave that as is. Okay, so that is gonna be our substrate. This is gonna be your structural layer below. And that, because we don't have the material in play, what you need to do is in material settings, a lot of you might have this, it might be quite small, so move this information up and click on this home button and then activate this AC materials. So this AEC materials, if you scroll right down to the bottom, there's a wood category. And here you can go and find the type of glue lamp. So I'm gonna use this glue laminated timber. And when you click on the glue laminated timber, you'll notice there's a little up arrow which says add material to document. Now that I've added this material to document, I can simply apply it. Okay, so basically we have a 380 buildup. So that's the buildup of the floor. Okay, and this is your timber layer. Now we just need to make the timber layer read correctly. So if we go to graphics, what you need to do, so on surface, surface patterns, we can change that 
to your timber material. You can make that a solid fill, for example, so that we know it's timber. We don't need to worry about that. Now in cut, so when you cut through this material, what would that look like? So here we're gonna use a foreground material to show that it's ply. Okay, so if you just scroll down, there's a whole lot of different types of, look, you can use ply, it depends. You can use these different materials you can use. And here, I'm just gonna use that as timber again. So I'm gonna use almost like what we did in AutoCAD last year, where we have two materials representing a, um, two different types of folds or hatches representing the same material. Okay, so if I press, okay, it would have applied this. Now at any point, if we want to preview what this is looking like, you can click the preview icon and if you zoom in, you'll start getting an idea of how this all works. Okay, so we've got a screed and then we've got a timber substructure. Okay, so here you can also change this. The way you preview this, you can also change this to section and plan by the way. Okay, so that's quite handy to know that you can view this in different ways. Okay, so that's in section. Okay, so that's actually very handy to know. Press OK. It gets a bit different when you're working with walls because technically you're looking through the floor slab as a section only. Okay. Now, you can move elements outside of the core layer, but it will have an effect. So maybe I need to highlight that. So I'm going to change that to be my structural material. But for now, if you want to put a screen on top, if you want to put so this is your screed in essence, but if you want to put another finish of tiles on top, you can simply go insert, move that up, and that can become a tile layer. So maybe that becomes tiles, for example. I'm not going to show you in this example, but if you wanted to add a tile layer, that's how you would do it. So that's your structural materials, the timber, and that's purely a substrate that sits above. Press OK. Press Apply. Press OK. OK, now you can see I have my new timber floors. I've got my new 510 coffered ceiling and I'll show you in another video I'll show you how to document this correctly but you can use the same workflow as we did with full regions except you're going to use a masking region to indicate where the coffers go or alternatively you can make a, a model in place void that cuts away so it actually makes it look like a coffered slab that is a lot more work so just bear that in mind okay okay great so I've got this floor now, so what I can simply do is I can match properties, so I can select the slab and I can go and match properties, so if you go, <coughs> uh, match, uh, sorry, select the slab, match properties, select the slab and then apply that, okay, so you can apply this to the rest of the floor slabs, okay. So that's worked really well, so I've got all my timber floors now, okay. Just bear in mind, if you've still got your mass in the models, if I go to, I'm just going to remove the link for this quickly. I'll explain why I want to do this. So I'm going to unload this for the time being. Press OK. Press OK. OK, for now, if you go to VG, if, in your, if your mass is off, so if your masses are off, make sure that you go to mass. Switch that on. I would actually, if you don't need the mass anymore, you can delete the mass because it's given you what you need. Now each floor becomes its own unique floor which you can go and edit the footprint for each slab now. Okay, so in essence now that you've got your slab, what I might do is quickly go to my site plan. Now I've linked in some information. Okay, so I've used the site services drawing. But remember, if you go to VG, you can start linking in all the different types of drawings that you need so you can get the site information correct. However, I'll bring back my link again just to kind of highlight what you can do. So reload. So maybe in this site drawing, what I might want to do is go to VG, Revit links. I'm going to tell this to load a specific view from the link file. So I'm going to say link by view. I'm going to say um, site site plan because I actually want to capture some information okay so basically I need the site, the site boundaries for this exercise in site so if I go to level 0 level 0 technically is my ground floor level if I select that floor slab or you can go into section view if you select this floor slab and you go and edit the boundary what I'm going to encourage you all to do what I would encourage you all to do is actually 
make this floor slab the size of your basement. So in essence, remember your, your site or your basement actually extends. So I'm going to use the align tool to that edge because technically your slab is going to run. You're going to have one big basement in essence. So I'm going to move all this information just like that. Use the trim command, trim that and that. And I'm going to make a very big basement quickly because technically that was my site limit. I'm going to go finish for now. So I'll go back to 3D. So in 3D view, here you see I've actually built a slab underneath all of that information because technically my basement is that whole area. Now what I can do, I can grab this information. So go to your section view. So in order to fix the rest of these slabs, you can remove both of those slabs very quickly. Select the slab. You're going to go to copy paste align to selected levels I'm going to go B1 and B2 all I need to do is change that one back to a 125 surface bed because it's just driven the shape for me change that back to a 255 ah please note in the edit type you need to fix that name so rename name that correctly okay so name that 380 okay so make sure you give it the correct name as well. Press OK. Good. So now that you want to be a 225 concrete slab. OK. So in essence, if we go to 3D view now and I go to manage links and I unhide the Revit model for the time being. So unload. OK. Press OK. You'll notice that your basement level. And if you go to VG and you switch off all the annotation objects just for the 3D view for the time being, just so you don't have a lot of unnecessary information in here. Now you can see that I've actually got my floor slabs working a lot better and maybe this floor slab very quickly. So you can start removing these holes if you don't need them. Okay. Good. So I might remove these floor slabs for the time being because you might find that this slab will drive a lot of the information what happens next. Okay. So in essence, I'm just going to say I'm going to select this floor slab, I'm going to copy it and paste it. I like to select the levels, I'm going to go from level 1 to level 7. Technically, it's level 3. Okay, I've duplicated the same one, so just uh, let me undo. Okay, I might have duplicated one of them, but it'll be quite easy to find. Just if you select an object and it has two floors, then you know I've got a duplicate. So just double. Just make sure you haven't duplicated a floor slab. That is quite common to do, by the way. Okay, good. All right, so now that I've got these floor slabs, remember we can use shafts to punch holes in the floor slabs. Okay, so there's another tool that we can start using to create a, a floor slab and a shaft. But for now, we've built our walls and our, we go back to your sections now. You'll notice that your floor slabs will start looking correct and all your floor slabs will start looking correct. Okay, in a later video, I'll cover how to make a coffered slab and make that represent correct.